Well, this is Race to Alaska, and it's wet. <laughs> uh, we know we're in Alaska now because it's really cold. Um, probably can't see a thing. I might just play here and try again. Hi, I'm Rowan. I'm a boat builder and shipwright um, in Melbourne, running my own business, Concept Fibres. And I'm Rowella and I work for Parks Victoria and our marine parks. We first learned about the race to Alaska, we, we got an email from my uncle. Fairly short email. It was a, hey guys, do you want to do this with the link? When we got home, we watched the link and there was no way we couldn't do it. From Mount Martha Yacht Club, we, we met down there sailing catamarans together. Uh, great bunch of guys. Uh, we've learnt that they're about to embark on a journey from uh, Vancouver, Canada, I believe, up to uh, Alaska. Yeah, get your car. Get your car. Um, these, these guys are, are red hot catamaran sailors out of Mount Martha. They've just won back to back national titles on their cat. Uh, so they're ready for the next journey, but I reckon this time they might have bitten off a little bit more than they can chew. <laughs> I, think, I think you might be right there. This is the only race that I've ever seen that does a Le Mans start. So we actually started up on the hard, up the top of a set of stairs. They do the countdown at the top, the same five minute countdown, and then it's go and everyone runs down the stairs to their boat to untie their boat and push it off the dock. We, we came yeah, out of point. Victoria, it was awesome, we were sailing most of the way. We got streets ahead actually. Yeah, we got streets yeah. ahead and then we poked our nose around the corner into the current and we just had nothing. Alright. Oh, g'day from team three and a half Aussie. G'day. Here we are just coming out to the eight o'clock, eight hours after the start. Um, not sure how far we've come but we've done a lot of pedalling, it's more like a pedal to Alaska than a race to Alaska so far. The low was almost the anxiety of thinking, is my body up for this? Because the consequences if we didn't keep pedalling were just so dire and you didn't want to put your crew in that situation and you just had to mentally get your head around the fact that you have to keep pedalling. And the next stitch is from sort of Active Pass up to Laskiti Island and Hornby Island, which yeah. is about halfway up the Gulf. And then you got the big decision on Seymour Narrows. Like, do you go, do you wait, do you put a hook down? What do you do, right? We're catching up with our fourth boat up here. Only four made it through the tidal gate. Yep, yep and we're doing like uh, sort of pretty, pretty solid nines, tens through the water. We've got a bit of flood time against us. And it's a pretty angry 20 knots out here at the moment. Yep. So we're, we've got two in, which feels a bit much, but... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, it's better than pedalling. <laughs> The racing that we've done in Australia, we do on, on fully crewed boats, and um, fully crewed boats could be anywhere from eight till tw to 12 people. We sail with four. Yeah. So when you, you get up for your, for your three hour watch, it's, it's exhausting. Um, so you don't get much of, a, much of a break from that. If you had more people- um, You could expend more people. Could, yeah, could push harder. Yeah. So the next, the next section is sort of Johnson Strait, basically okay. Telegraph no, Cove was... out to round, round Cape Caution. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, that's sort of highlighted one of the things that we were really fussed about on this trip, which yeah. is how hard are we prepared to push? Um, we to find a safe harbour uh, about two hours up the track from here. Yeah, the gale warning is silly. next so we've got about 40 knots coming through tonight. Um, and look, looking at the position, that's probably five or six hours away we'll get. So we want to be uh, tucked away and tucked in until then, and we'll ride the, uh, ride the back side when it when drops the over night or in the morning.
so we had a bit of a uh, bit of a pause in um, uh, Port McNeil. Um, there, there was a, uh, a pretty severe weather warning that came through for the whole coast of Canada. So that was the first point that we'd stopped during the race. We had um, had two stops, uh, three stops actually, unfortunately, during the race, mm. and all of those were, were due to weather. Whatever day we came over from uh, Kit Kala. Yeah, yeah. Kit Kala. Kit Kala. Kit Kala. Yeah. Yeah. Like we pulled in there to to dodge another gale that I'm not sure actually happened. Well, when, when we set off on that day, we um we had a bit of a bit of a tricky time with some current getting out, and we got out yeah. in the open water and started blasting down the channel. And as we're blasting down the channel, looking over the back, we can see these sails. I'm like, oh, that that must be Triceratops because that was the next boat chewing up behind us. Like, yeah. They've, they've really caught up. That's pretty impressive. Like, yeah. They are really close. So we tried to find some reception because a little bit further down yep. we started no to get reception. The phone started binging. We're like, oh, quick, get down there, get yep. the weather. <laughs> to, to find out that it's willpower behind us. I'm like, willpower behind us. And hang on, on the tracker, that's Triceratops in front of yep. us. Yep. We've managed to uh, find a competitors catch up with us overnight, which is great because there was the gale warning. We weren't game to uh, push through that with no reception, no forecast, no information about what was going on. We were uh, we were 12 miles out when the breeze first shut down coming into Ketchikan. We'd locked into the fact yeah. that that was going to be four hours to get to the end, but that was four hours of pedalling. We were going to make it. It's okay. Yeah, that was wild. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's okay, it's wet, almost there. Uh, just throwing everything at us in the last few hours. We've had uh, no breeze, rain, really cold. Uh, Triceratops stopped off the back here, so it's a little neck and neck racing coming into the last 50 miles. Uh, yeah, we just keep going, doing everything, uh, trying to stay dry. <laughs> At this point, we're sailing, we're happy. There's indication that the breeze is going to stay in, which is good. We're all having a nice meal on the deck and it's a little bit surreal because it's at this point where you think we actually really could make it to Ketchikan. Our, our navigation software was giving us an ETA of about 6pm. Mm. So it was looking like we were going to get to the end of the race with time to go and grab dinner on land. If the breeze had have held in, which it didn't, we, we would have, but uh, we ended up a lot closer to midnight. We saw a, a masthead light coming in um, from about uh, about 40 miles out. Yeah. It kept on getting closer and closer and closer. And we knew Triceratops was behind us on the tracker. We kept checking it. So this yeah, masthead yeah. light, we were just, it's looming. We're going, oh no, it's coming up fast. It's coming up fast. The masthead light got really tall and we could kind of hear a motor and it turns out it was a tug the whole and then time. And then, then he turned his two nav lights on as well as the mast light. And yeah, okay, it's a tug. <laughs> This was magic. To have people on the dock there ready to celebrate you coming in. They were as excited, if not more, that you were finishing than yourself. None of these people cared where you came or how fast you've been going or any of the, you know, your sailing technique. They just cared that you made it there. It almost brought tears to your eyes that these people cared so much that you'd finished. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? It's great to have made it here and been here for yeah. about almost less than 24 hours. Yeah, less than about 23. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I can't say this is the last one. Oh. Oh.
You know, sailing with family is actually a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really, it really is. Because, you know, sure, there's there's rough edges and all that sort of stuff. But basically, it's just like, yeah, no, we're doing this right Yeah, yeah. Indian, yeah. And if you've yeah. got your family that's on board with that, that brings you all together. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. I learnt quite a lot doing that race. Um, I experienced breezes and things that I'd, I'd never experienced here in Australia, um, currents that I'd never seen anything right. like before, and I'd, I'd like to take that and, uh, and possibly have another go. I think so. Yeah.